Hey, Walter Sorrells back with more tips for the knife maker. Today, making molds for making micarta for making knife handles. So I was kind of joking at the beginning here, I'm making something to make something to make something. Uh, but sometimes that's the way knife making works and that's one of the really fun parts about the, the craft. In this case, we're gonna be making these little molds right here that we can make micarta knife handle material in. Micarta is a really versatile and useful uh, material. Now, many years back, I made a video showing how you can make kind of your own customized micarta so that whatever you're making for your knife is gonna be something that nobody else has ever made. And so these little molds right here will help you do that. Now, uh, these are made on a CNC machine. I get complaints every time I do stuff on CNC machines because, hey, everybody doesn't have one sitting in their garage. But this is something that you, know, you can do with a router. There are a lot of different ways of skinning this cat. So um, I hope that you'll stick with me here and uh, you know, you'll be able to do something kind of similar, probably in your own garage. All right, let's get started. My cart is an industrial laminate that was invented about 100 years ago and is still used to make various things like electrical standoffs. It's a very predictable, durable product that looks kind of cool when it's ground, and so it's been used for many years by custom knife makers as a go-to handle material for hard-use knives. Like I said, a long time ago, I made a video showing how I whipped up some homebrew type micarta. I just made the stuff out of Bondo. It was pretty cool, but I've recently gotten a little deeper into casting and resins. The result is that I've refined some of the techniques I used in order to make micarta that's both easier to produce and higher quality. Most of that is for a future video, but today I'm gonna show how I make a mold for casting micarta. Here's the design as I drew it up in Fusion 360. Basically, it's just a shallow pan sort of thing cut into a chunk of 3 quarter inch HDPE plastic. The mold is made to exactly fit my El Cheapo Harbor Freight pressure pot. See my previous video in the cards and descriptions if you want to catch the video on how I set that up. Now, this is intended to be stackable, so if I want to make a whole bunch of my carta at once, I can just stack all these things on top of each other and fit a bunch of scales into the pot at once. So, a quick word about plastic and how plastics interact with resins and epoxies. All plastics are not created equal. Some are pretty sticky and some aren't. At a more or less reasonable price point, the slickest plastic I'm aware of is HDPE, or high-density polyethylene. The reason this is important is that you want the stuff you're casting, micarta in this case, to slide out of the mold without ripping out chunks of your mold. HDPE will let you do that. Now, you can use mold release, but if you miss a spot, you're in trouble. Also, it's simpler to skip it. HDPE is used for commercial cutting boards, so if you have an old cutting board lying around, it might work for this. By the way, if you're interested in picking up plans for the build with really detailed scale drawings and all that, you can pick them up on my Patreon page. All you have to do is support this channel at any pledge level and you'll have access to this and a ton of other projects that I've done over the years. I made this mold in my Tormach CNC machine. Now before you freak out and complain you don't have a CNC machine, hold on. You can do this with a router. The CNC approach is easier and more repeatable, but still. Cut a six inch square into a piece of MDF, use that as a router template, and you can route this out using a router bit with a flush trim bit. That's the type that has the little bearing at the top that allows you to sort of trace around a pattern. For those of you who are CNC nerds, I'll rough out the pocket with a 3 8 two flute uncoated carbide end mill. When I do small batch stuff, I try to run pretty slow. In this case, I think I'm doing about 75 inches per minute with a 3 8 inch depth of cut and 150 thou axial cut. All of that's fairly slow for plastic. What makes them stackable is that I've attached a little foot to each mold. Then the pockets for the feet with a quarter inch two flute uncoated carbide end mill. Of 
quarter inch clearance holes for the screws that will hold the feet on. Drilling plastic, the main thing you have to worry about is bird's nesting that causes friction and that in turn melts the plastic, but this came out fine. The only slightly fancy thing about this design that I was able to do on my CNC machine is that I used a half inch ball end mill to radius the edges and corners of the mold. This makes it a little easier to pry the material out of the mold. Even here though, you can get a ball end flush trim router bit and do exactly the same thing. And that's about it. Now to make the foot. I planned to do this with Delrin plastic, but turned out I didn't have any in stock, so I went ahead and made them from aluminum instead. Anyway, I'll do this on my lathe. Again, you could just saw them by hand and stick them in a drill press and do the exact same thing that I'm doing here. I just did it this way to make them even in length so that they wouldn't rock around. I use a cutoff tool to get a square face, then I'll drill a number seven, which is the same thing as a 201 thou hole, which is the standard size for tapping a quarter 20 hole. Then rinse and repeat. Now I could thread them in the lathe, but you have to swap out the drill and the tap. So instead I dropped them into a 5C collet and threaded them with a hand drill. Then I countersunk the holes in the mold with a hand drill and screwed the feet on with quarter 20 screws. That's that. Here's a quick demo of one among many recipes for homebrew micarta. In this case, I'm using aluminum swarf from my mill mixed in with alumilite casting resin. Much cooler stuff than Bondo, believe me. I've also used titanium this way. Anyway, I'll do a video in a couple weeks showing off a whole bunch of different funky micarta type handle scale materials. In the meantime, here's how this came out. And here's how it comes out of the mold. Pretty slick, literally. And because the mold bottom is ultra flat, the micarta will be so flat that no sanding will be required. Cut it to shape, drill it, attach it to your handle, boom, you are ready to roll. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed that. You know, the important takeaway here is really that this material uh, is something that you can work with in your own shop. You don't have to have a CNC machine to do this. Uh, and you can produce some really cool material with it. All right, take care and keep making those knives. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like what we're doing here, please subscribe and make sure that you click on that bell so you get notified of all the latest videos. Want to buy a knife from me? Check out my modern blades at tacticsarmory.com. Digging the channel? You can support our video making efforts on Patreon. You know, I've been banging away on these videos for like 10 years. So I hope you'll show some love for all that hard work. Link in the cards and descriptions. Finally, if you're interested in making Japanese swords, check out my full line of Japanese sword videos where I show how to forge Japanese swords as well as how to polish them and how to make fittings, handles, and scabbards. WalterSorrelsBlades.com